we're going to turn this DDWRT router into an access point only. So essentially, I'm going to use my PFSense box as the router and firewall, and the DDWRT routers are all going to just be access points, either wired or wireless, uh, throughout my house. So I'm going, to, I'm going to have several of them throughout my property, I guess. I shouldn't say my house. So we're just going to go through some steps. So the first thing is we're going to take out this automatic configuration, and we're just going to disable this. It doesn't actually need to be set up. Um, down here, I'm going to give this a name, so I'm going to say access point 2. I don't need access point 1. I've already done that one. And then the host name, I'm going to give it a host name here, and you can see I kind of already did, uh, again, number 1, so I'm just going to call this 2. And then I'll give this my uh, home.loc here, and everything else is going to stay the same. Uh, you want to just leave those set up. Now, here, I need to give this a static IP address, so it's going to be in the .10 because that's where my PFSense box is, and I want to give it an address that's in that range, so I'm going to, uh, it's got to be outside of my DHCP range, uh, so if you remember on the, on the PFSense box, I set that up from basically 2 to 10, so this is definitely outside that range, and I'm trying to keep them high so I can extend that at some point to have some DHCP client capability. Subnet mask 255.255.255.0, this is the same as doing like a slash 24, which basically means this is the only one that will change uh, as it's handing out addresses. And then here, we're just going to set this to be the PFSense box. So we're going to do 192.168.10.1 and 192.168.10.1 as the, so the gateway and the local DNS. So now this box sometimes has an effect and sometimes doesn't. A lot of times maybe it may not even be there for your router, it just depends, but on this router it has five ports on the back. Four of them are network ports and one is the WAN port or the link port or the uplink port. It just depends on what your brand calls it, but it's the one that you would connect your modem to. So this option says change that so that it's not specifically from the modem, but it's just another accessible port on the back. So I'm gonna check that box. So down here on DHCP server, I, there's nothing to change here, but we're going to disable this. We don't want this to be the DHCP server. We want that to be my PFSense box. So kind of keep that in mind. And then we're going to uncheck this one and this one so that everything's unchecked here. We're going to scroll back up, just double check all of our settings. And then on the time zone, we can just disable it or we can set it to our time zone. It's kind of up to you. It's not something we have to set, but I'm going to click on save. I want to make sure my settings all saved. It looks okay to me there. And then we're going to go make some other changes before we do any apply settings. So the next thing we're going to do is come, we're going to stay on setup, but we're going to jump over to advanced routing. And we're going to change this from gateway to router, which is right down here. So instead of it being a gateway to our internet, our modem, this is just going to be another route basically to get to the PSNs box. And that's the only change we need to make there. So we're just going to go down here and click on save again. Now we're going to go make our changes to our wireless setup. So we're going to click on wireless and I'm going to leave it as an AP. And here I'm going to go and click on in only. And I want to give this the same name that I gave my other one. And then I'm going to set this to a different uh, frequency. I'm going to leave it on 20 megahertz uh, just because that's what the instructions say that we should do. And I'm not going to change anything else here. I'm going to go ahead and just save that change. And then I'm going to come down and do the 5 gigahertz the same way. And I'm going to change it to AC only. And I'm going to call it Mac. And it's this 5 gigahertz one. And I'm going to change this one to 40. Everything else I'm going to leave the same again. I'm going to save my changes. And now staying on the wireless tab, I'm going to jump over to wireless security. And I'm going to enable the WPA2 PSK, the AES, and I'm going to give it a strong password for login in the same way here now you see it blanked my password at the top so kind of pay attention to that that's why you kind of click save as you go but in this case we can type it in both places and then click save so now we've got our wireless security set next thing we want to do is go to the services tab and then the services sub tab right here and we're going to scroll down and we want to make sure that under DNS mask it is disabled. And then further down there's one that's that's got kind of an odd name. It's this one here under the WAN traffic controller. We're going to disable it as well. And then we're going to save our changes. 
And we can go make sure everything stayed the same. It looks like everything did. So now we're going to go back to the top here and we're going to go over to the firewall setup under security and it comes to firewall automatically. We're going to disable the firewall on this box essentially, which disables everything else. And we're going to click save. You want to make sure that this warning notifier is also set to disabled. If it's not, if it's enabled, make sure to disable it and then just click save again to make sure it's not being turned on. And then it's suggested that under the administration tab, under management. So here under the web actions section where it says info site password protection, they say it's better to enable this because that way if somebody hits the URL, it doesn't display information about the router itself. So that's good. Then we're going to scroll down and we're going to find the routing section. We're going to disable the routing section. And then we're going to select save. Now at this point we would connect the ethernet cable to our main router which is pfSense and then select that to the WAN port but in this case we disabled the WAN port so it can be any port on the back of the device and reboot this thing. Now I have not applied any of these settings so the one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my setup on my main page here make sure everything looks correct and then I'm going to go and say apply settings. Now this takes just a second for it to apply everything. It looks like everything got applied. We're just going to go back to the administration tab. We're going to go down and we're going to hit reboot. Now because I'm rebooting and I've changed the IP address of this thing, it should not come back up where I can actually access this page. It's going to take a minute for it to reboot and you'll see that when you do this you get the same scrolling. If it comes back up on the 192.168.1.1, something didn't take, you need to go back in and just check those settings. There we go. It says unable to connect, which means it's turned off. And I can see on the front of the device that the lights are not on yet. Now what I've done is I've plugged in my PFSense firewall directly to one of the ports on the back of the uh, wireless router that I just set up. I'm going to give it a few minutes to kind of come back up and look like everything's working correctly on the lights on the front, which I, I know what it looks like when it's up and running. And then we'll connect back to it and we should we should be able to go to 1.1 but it should give us the pfSense box uh, IP address. And then we should be able to go to the 1.222 or the 10.1, I'm sorry not 1.1. Uh, 10.1 should give us pfSense and then 10.222 should give us that router that we just set up. So we can check that just to make sure everything's working correctly. We'll do a disconnect here real quick. Give it a few seconds, I'm just going to turn that back on, and it should say connected, and if we check we should get a .10 address, which we do, and now if we try this again it should go. There we go, there's my PFSense router, which we expect, and 192.168.10.222, and that's going to prompt me for that password I just set up all ago, that username and password, and there we go. Now we're back into our DDWRT router, and I've got an access point set up that I can use to access my internet. So I'm basically going to take this and just export everything I've done, which you can do. I'm going to zoom this up. I believe we go to administration, backup. When you, when you go to the backup tab here, we can actually run a backup. And you just look at the name of the file. It's got a .bin extension on it. I'm just going to save that file. Now, when I bring up my other routers, I'm going to reset them. I'm just going to come to this tab. I'm going to click on Browse, and I'm going to go pick that file that I just saved. And then all I have to do is go change the IP address, and everything else is going to work just fine. So that's really it. We've set up our access point. I can set up several others very quickly now using the backup and restore method and change a couple of settings, and we're going to be good to go. Hope this helped you guys. If you enjoyed this video, like, subscribe, tell your friends about it so they can come along on the journey with us, and I'll talk to you next time.